do your famous mm -hmm. Coke you coffee combo. You know it. The good stuff. It is. Oh my gosh, I am officially a cartoon character. I looked into this camera and how many times have I worn... Oh, you're in your own gear too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I am a cartoon... I haven't worn anything besides a own gear. Like, I, I honestly have not. No. Like, I just keep recycling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're gonna it's easy keep, to do. Yeah, you're going to keep seeing these same colors, y'all, so no, get used to it. It's just a, a certain kind of colorway. Oh, no. Gosh, that is uh, too funny. So right now we're about to eat some cold sliders. We mm -hmm. just got done eating. Oh, first off, hey everybody. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Um, so we're having some cold sliders today um, that we just made for this video <coughs> and ooh. An espresso. Oh, is it too is too much dip <coughs> on the chip? No, I just don't know how to drink liquid apparently. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's hot. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So all right, starting out with what made you happy this week. I'm gonna go first. Okay. Um, well, two things. One, Whataburger brought back the banana pudding shake. Mm -hmm. And I just wanna thank them. I wanna thank God for answering our prayers. Amen, hallelujah. I just, yeah, we just need to continue to pray because they haven't made their way back down to Texas to be headquartered. They're still in Chicago, Ooh, but, um, but you tomorrow. know. Yeah, I know. Mm. So it's, I mean, it's still a Texas, it's a still a Texas Pride, Texas company, but mm -hmm. they're just outside of Chicago now. But yeah. they brought it back, which is good. Did you get one? I did. Was it good? It was. Yeah. I, it was. And you know what? I actually ended up, so it was during my treat meal, and I mm -hmm. wanted to go to Whataburger, right? Mm -hmm. And I was like, it's too far away. Mm -hmm. So I ordered from IHOP just over the phone to go get my little pancakes and my egg whites. Mm -hmm. Boom. It's going to happen. And then I passed by and I saw the sign. I was like, oh, let me go ahead and just, let me just go ahead and see if the, the shake is. The spirit is I know. calling me. The spirit was turn, calling me. Turn right, what? And I didn't, because it, I wasn't going to go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden I was like, oh, there is one over there. And I saw that and I ordered and I took it as a sign that I was supposed to eat there. Amen. And then I picked up that food too. I got like burger, fries, same thing, Texas toast. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, Kev, what do you do with all this food, bro? Mm -hmm. Just like stop. Mm -hmm. So, on my way home, it was for a reason. Mm -hmm. I did see a person, a, a gentleman on the side of the road, mm -hmm. um, and I gave him the water burger, fresh, mm -hmm. without being, you know, you know, like messed with. Got the fries. He didn't get the shake though. Mm. The shake went with me. Mm -mm. But that's back, everybody. Mm -hmm. if you have not. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> um, and the second thing is. Um, my mom has been in and out of the hospital and she's had to go on this new type of chemo mm -hmm. and it looks like the chemo is now working her numbers are going down again so That's we were awesome. concerned yeah. before because they were rising pretty quickly because you know you get used to certain medications mm. so this one seems to be working we're just going to continue to to be prayerful but you know i don't know about you but i just feel like as we get older i just enjoy making memories with my parents or so mm -hmm. and just yeah. whenever you do have those opportunities just to kind of like really yeah. j just lean in and um and i still haven't learned how to make that gumbo i feel like a part of me just mm -hmm. kind of like i don't want to admit yeah that just yet because yeah. i feel like it's going to be emotional as she teaches me how to do that yeah so yeah I, I don't know about your parents but i feel like mine or maybe i notice more of the hints they drop about like hanging out or doing something specific and it's like, mm -hmm. they probably have always done it, but now you just hear a little bit more getting older. So it's kind of like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's definitely a thing. Yeah. Like, I think my dad has said over the course of like the last three months, multiple times, and he never does this. He never like repeats himself. Right. But he's repeating himself <laughs> to me, me and my brothers about how he's like, oh, you know, yeah, we should really make sure like once a month. We get out and play golf like early in the morning. I love it. You know? Yeah. And so cool. me and my other brother, Shay, we were just like always texting, figuring out dates that would work out and trying to do that now. That's so, good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I know he looks forward to it, doesn't he? Oh, yeah. Of course. So he, he loves to play, but he'll only play if it's first thing in the morning. Yeah. Because then he can play quick and yeah, weather's nice in the summer, obviously. So Get on yeah. with his day, too. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of weather, mm -hmm. that's what made me happy this week. A little bit of rain? Yeah, I, I didn't know what to do. I was like, maybe I need to go outside and start like thawing out my pipes or something. Like, it's just so cold <laughs> here in Texas. It was Ooh. 90 degrees and not 108. 
so a funny thing, last night I was on the phone with someone. Mm -hmm. I was just chilling out there on the balcony, mm -hmm. on the patio rather, and um, was there, and I mean, it was like 10, 10 p.m., mm -hmm. just hang out on the phone, and someone called me, I was like, hey, have you been outside yet? Yeah. They're like, no. I said, go outside, it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh my God, it is. So they're sitting yeah. outside too, and I said, it's probably like 90 degrees. We look at it. It was 90 degrees, but, but it, it felt, feels great. Yes, yeah. it felt like 70. I'm it's not such kidding. a break. <laughs> it's such a good break. And like early in the morning, it's in the 70s. Like, yeah. you can't beat that. I love that so much. It's the only time I walk max. Yeah, that's how we know. We know it's real hot in Texas when 90 degrees is a break. And I'm sitting outside thinking it's like 70 because there's a little, a little breeze. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're gonna hop in today to what's well, in the news. I thought about doing something a little bit different. We're gonna do okay. a deep dive um, yeah. on a topic, and it's mental wellness. Okay. And the reason why is like I've seen this come up a couple times. Yeah. And there was a beautiful article, a brilliant article that was written in the Time in Time magazine. I'm just like a huge fan of them now. Mm -hmm. um, and it's called "America Has Reached Peak Therapy." Why is our mental health getting worse? And it's written by Jamie DeCharmy. I, I encourage you to go and check out this long article. It is pretty long, but, mm -hmm. it's a, it's, but it's a really good read. But it touches on some things that I've really been thinking about personally. Yeah. So I kind of wanted to talk about this article in the context of my experiences. Yeah. And also if you have any too, because I feel like this yeah. is a, it's a worthwhile conversation. And, and essentially, I think what, you know the whole premise is 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 the current treatment is the way that we're approaching mental health yeah actually helping people okay or is it making them you know like more of the same mm. and also is it just more of a buzzword now because you know before it was stigmatized and it is still like stigmatized but not not the way that it has before and it's almost become like opportunity for someone to be like oh yeah i'm i'm depressed i'm anxious and so therefore okay. xyz yeah. you know yeah. So it's it's become a lot more, I don't know, pop culture-ish, would you? I can see. Yeah, it's just the popularity of it, right? It's Yeah. It's it's yeah, it's like you said. On one hand, it's not as stigmatized. It's normal. Like people are used to it. Yeah. It becomes a part of people's daily routines. They talk about, well, if I'm going to the gym working out my body, I should be going to therapy to right. work through my mental state and all that stuff, so. Yeah. But I can I can see how well, just like anything, if it gains popularity. Yeah. There are versions that maybe aren't what they need to be, or people that are taking advantage of folks too. That's you true. Know? Yeah, yeah that, I mean that's <laughs> going to exist yeah. everywhere, right? Yeah. Um, so here's some stats that I think everyone should be aware of. So one in eight adults are on antidepressants. Okay. That's yeah. pretty. That's you know, yeah. one in five receives treatment for mental wellness mm -hmm. or mental health. Mm -hmm. um, the use of mental health services went up forty percent from wow. last year. Okay. Yeah. Um, the suicide rate has also gone up 30%. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at the treatment, so what people are doing. So we've got a 40% increase in people seeking out help for mental wellness. Yeah. We got one in eight. So what is that? That's like, it's not 20%. What is that? Like one in eight is one point, what is it, six? Wait, wait, hold on. Why am I having trouble with this? All right, that's two, three, one, two. No, that's wrong, Kevin. Wait, what a is one and eight? A, eight? a quarter would be 25. 1.25. What is it? So 12? It's like, yeah. it's like a little bit around like 12% or so. 12, 13%. Yeah. That's what it is. Oh my gosh. I used to be really great at math. <laughs> um, so you have that. You mm -hmm. know, you got 12, 13% of adults on antidepressants and you know you got 20 percent that are receiving treatment yeah and then overall you have a 40 percent increase in mental wellness services that people are, are using now with that this is in the shadow of this it's like the suicide rate has also gone up 30 percent mm -hmm. one in three adults are reporting anxiety and one in 25 have a severe mental wellness issue like bipolar or schizophrenia mm -hmm. and so what this article is doing is that like it you know, it it talks about how we're being treated right now you know, for mental wellness, and there and if we are like, over medicating people. Okay. Yeah. Um, because there's no and the difference w with psychiatry as it relates to other professions and other verticals, 
within um, within the medical field is that there's it's not like other ones where you have specific things that you can do to treat it. So mm-hmm. if you get cancer, yeah, what are you gonna get? Yeah, chemo. chemo yeah. Um, if you get you know if you have like high high blood pressure, you're mm-hmm. gonna get some hypertension pills. Yeah. If you have mental wellness issues, what do you do? Yeah. It's kind of a, a range yeah, there. Yeah, <laughs> you don't really know. And so there's a Bible. There's the um, Diagnostic Statistic Manual of mental, of mental Disorders. And it's just based off of symptoms. And it's really subjective. So mm-hmm. there are no biomarkers, okay. which makes it really hard yeah. to treat it. And so, um, so, what, so what usually happens or, or what is happening is that someone goes in and they're saying that they... Um, that they don't feel well, mm-hmm. and so they are, you know, given treatment for like depression, but they really have a bipolar. Okay. You know, yeah. and so those, and and so that's important because the history of mental wellness and and depression and the way that it's been studied is that it was always on the premise that it was a lack of serotonin mm-hmm. in our brain. That's what I feel like I've always heard. Yeah, yeah. me too. Mm-hmm. And so if we treat that, if we treat the serotonin, then we can do the medication. Mm-hmm. I mean, then people can begin to feel better. And so that's why you have this really huge wave of, of, of meds, yeah. you know, that are just focused on that. Hyper-focused on yeah. that. Yeah. But when they started to do some studies around it to see, like, what was the best predictor of mm-hmm. people having success in therapy, um, it was not the medication, yeah. but it was their relationship with their therapist, which mm-hmm. I can... I can 100%. say, yeah, yeah, like if you don't vibe with your therapist, it's just, it's, it's yeah. hard. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's why you, there's only certain people in your life that you talk about stuff too, because, <laughs> say that. because there's a relationship with them that, uh, that you know, level of trust that's been built, or at least you know how they're going to react or, yeah. um, they're not going to overreact when you tell them something, they're going to listen and, you know, work through it with you. Like, yeah. Yeah. So you've had um, some mental health. Well, you've been to therapy before. Wait, no, you haven't. I've never you've been never been to, been to therapy. therapy. Oh wow! I know. Could be a case study. For... Your wife went to therapy though, right? <laughs> yeah, she's, she's been... been on and off through the years. Um, I think maybe maybe three to six months was probably the longest consistent mm-hmm. streak that she was going. Like same time every it's every week me. or every yeah. other week or so. So yeah, but um, I've never been to traditional therapy. Yeah. Did she say it was helpful? Mm, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. So about 75% of people say that therapy is helpful. Yeah. Um, and <clears throat> so they say that therapy is, is helpful. And they also say that perhaps their medication is, but everything mm-hmm. is anecdotal. So okay. they don't, so it's just based off of what people are saying. And yeah. so that's, I think is the, is the, is the challenge, but it's also, you know, it's, it's a it's a start, right? Because yeah. we do have people actually going through something, yeah. um, and seeing like how they feel afterwards. Now, I heard this podcast a long time ago because I was thinking like, wow, why are why are so many people getting meds? Mm-hmm. So it all goes back. This is like forty years ago. Okay. All right. And first off, let me just you know set this up because this article does does a good job. It doesn't go into this history. I got this from someplace else. Mm-hmm. But it, it talks about like um, what is the most effective way because again, historically, everything has been based around the serotonin levels, and that's why they were just giving Prozac out out like it was yeah. candy, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, but now research is showing that it's a lot more complicated than that. Yeah. Right. And so there and so there's this theory or there's this therapy called problem solving therapy that is way more effective. And what they're basically doing is they help you to manage some of the different stressors in your life. Where does this whole thing about Prozac come from? Mm-hmm. Do you remember when we talked to Dr. Ahmad, mm-hmm. Garrett Price, yeah. um, and he mentioned something about defensive medicine. Okay, yeah. And them being scared about doing certain things, so they have to just, let's just run through the whole thing. I'm yeah. just gonna give you this physical and everything else. So 40 years ago, there's this guy named Ray Osher, Osheroff. Mm-hmm. Um, he worked in a dialysis clinic and he just started to feel really depressed, right? He, um, so he went into, or his family checked him into Chestnut Lodge for some treatment. Okay. And there at Chestnut Lodge, um, they just begin to treat him, the different types of therapy and talking therapy, mm-hmm. you know, all that stuff that we had, you know, the behavioral therapy. 
Um, and he really didn't feel himself like getting better. Yeah. So he went to another one that's called like Silver Hill, I believe. Now, when he went to Silver Hill, what happened was um, he, he, um, they, they said, oh, you know what? We got to get you on some medication because there's this, there are these new drugs. And this is 40 years ago. Yeah. There are these new drugs out there right now that actually help out with serotonin and they can boost your levels. So they give it to him. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, Ray starts feeling better. He's yeah. touting this to everybody. He, um, he even goes and, you know, and he's like, um, he, he's doing well at like work. And which is crazy too, because he was feeling better, but he was also ostracized at work because they found out that he was like, you know, oh, you know, he's a crazy, so he's ostracized yeah. a little bit. Yeah. And, and that did something for him too, because he's like, yo, this isn't like, it wasn't my fault in a sense, right? Yeah. Um, but he's feeling better now. And he's, yeah. you know, he's thinking like, man, I wasted like all this time. Other, Could you have know. just been taking those pills. So then what does yeah. he do? He sues Chestnut Lodge okay. for negligence mm -hmm. because they should have told him that those pills were, were an option for him. Okay. It was a really big court case. Mm -hmm. He actually wins. Okay. After that, Prozac and everything else is flying off the shelves yeah. because doctors don't want to be sued anymore. Mm -hmm. And they don't want to be sued. So they're like, you know what? Here you go. Oh. What do you think about that? Isn't that like... That's so interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I would have just assumed that just like any other kind of helpful medication that's out there, that it's just like becomes available, people start taking it, word of mouth, it starts spreading around, and it's like yeah. you see more advertising for it, like all that kind of stuff. But this, to know that there was a negligence court case that this guy filed because they didn't give it to him, and that's how it entered the marketplace, and then... Well, in mass like and that. And then a it's... rush of, like, after that, you said it snowballed, essentially, yeah, the amount of... Oh, wow. People started to, um, you know, to do that because they didn't want to get sued because they have to give people the option. Yeah. And so when you have these, again, remember, yeah. this isn't studied like, you know, other things. So there are no trials yeah, to yeah. say this is doing this. Mm -hmm. This is all based off of what mm -hmm. you say. Yeah. You're feeling better is what you, you say. How you feel, yeah. So they're like, all right, fine. So people are they're saying this. So how many corners were cut in this process? Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. people have to go. And so, they, but you know, you hear stuff all the time and like, you know, let me go talk to my doctor and get some Prozac. Yeah. And so-and-so said, and what's interesting too about Ray is that he eventually started to not feel so good. Mm -hmm. And so you realize that it really wasn't that yeah. <laughs> and other people too, yeah. which is what makes treating depression and anxiety a little bit more complicated than others yeah. because it, it's, it's, um, you one thing could actually hurt the other. So mm -hmm. if you give somebody, you know, a medication for for um, for depression and they have like, you know, a bipolar, yeah. you've always heard that there's a chemical imbalance right. because of mental wellness. Mm -hmm. Well the doctors are saying that if when you give medication that's not for that entirety for that purpose, you're actually causing a medical imbalance. Yeah. And so that also happens too. So yeah. you're like, I don't feel it. Well of yeah. course you don't because now Hormonally, you know, you you know, all this stuff is not balanced now because you've been taking this and you yeah. should have been taking that. Which is kind of interesting, don't you think? Just a little, like... Yeah. Um, so, anyway, so Ray sues, and mm -hmm. that's how it becomes, like, a really big thing. And doctors are giving that, you know, out to everybody. Um, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And here we are now. <laughs> and, yeah, and, and here we are now. <laughs> kind of reconsidering. Yeah, with one in eight uh, um, adults yeah. taking it, 40% increase in mental health services yeah. people are using, 30% increase in suicide rate. That doesn't make sense. Yeah. What's going on? It's, it's one thing is not, you know, it, we should have at least some type of correlation yeah. if this stuff is supposed to be um, working. Well, it's a reminder, too, that maybe it's like the medication is just a small piece to the puzzle. It's a placebo you or know? something. Yeah. You know, it's like, well, it can help. Um, yeah. It's also like, let's look at, you know, lifestyle, what's going on in your life. Like, how do those things that also affect your, your mental state too, you know? You <sighs> are 100% right on the money with that. Yeah. Because one of the things that they talked about in the article was like, they could only do so much to help out someone's yeah. depression and anxiety and things like that. Mm -hmm. Medication can only go so far. Yeah. They need other things like access to affordable housing, yeah. education, That's exactly what I thought. job I was like, training, like what how how difficult would it be to be in a really difficult life circumstance? Name any anyone yeah. you want that would be just super stressful. 
but then you're taking a medication that makes you feel really good. And you have to balance that with the, your reality. Like, I, yeah, there's an imbalance there for sure. You don't, you're not able to see kind of like it's, it's good in a sense to feel our pain and feel the stuff that we're going through, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's just where I'm like, yeah, you can't just hit the numb button. And then the minute the medication wears off, you're faced with still your situation. Yeah. Like that's terrifying. It is terrifying. And I feel like this is maybe the part, let's unpack this yeah. right here, if you don't mind. This is where it kind of hit home for me yeah. reading this because for the past, I guess like year and a half now, almost mm -hmm. two years, I've had to go back on medication, but mm -hmm. I've never had medication like this before in terms of like, I really needed it, yeah. like really, really yep. needed it. And, um, and I remember going to my first session and both doc, both the doctor and a the therapist mm -hmm. were separately concerned. Um, just because, I mean, I'll, I'll be upfront. Yeah. Um, one thing that I, that I um, have, and and I don't, I'm not trying to do this. Yeah. But I have suicidal ideation, mm -hmm. like, all the time. Yeah. And what people don't understand is like, oh, really? But everything's going so well. I have it all the time. Yeah. All the time, like, mm -hmm. and it just, and I hate that. Yeah. I hate, you know, um, that just because mm -hmm. you know, like, you want to be here, and you don't want to, and I don't want to feel anxious. I don't want to feel this way. Yeah. Um, and so I didn't know like what to do and they didn't. So they're yeah. like, Hey, you know, we got to get you on this immediately. So they, so they put me on a protocol of the, you know, the medication plus therapy. Okay. Like I had to be doing both of them. Now recently I kind of stopped my therapy in the last couple months just mm -hmm. because I'm like, there was a lot of other stuff going on and, yeah. um, and therapy really did help. Like yeah. even my friends were like, yo, something's different about you. Mm -hmm. Um, because it really helped to unpack some of the trauma yeah. um, before. In fact, my first session with my therapist, after she was talking to me, she said, um, to be honest with you, I don't think that you have bipolar. Mm -hmm. I don't think that, you're, that yeah. you have anxiety. She said, I think that you have unresolved trauma. Yeah. And so when we went down that path, I mm -hmm. mean, a lot of stuff began to unlock. Now, from a from a chemical or whatever you want to call it standpoint, mm -hmm. those things, I'd, I'd, I'd become so used mm -hmm. to those things. Yeah. So it's had a lot, you know, ideation and, and just dealing with the depression and smiling through it. Yeah. That I thought that was normal. Right. And so that's why they're like, no, you're, you're not, this is not a, a normal way of living. You should not be thinking about yeah. these things and, and one day, you know, things can progress and we don't want that. Mm -hmm. So I always think like, am I doing the right thing? <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. um, and I went on the medication and I've been feeling better. Yeah. Or I did at the yeah. time, right? When I first started, sort of, but I didn't know, mm -hmm. is this because of therapy? Is this because of medication? Now I stopped taking the medication at one point Yeah. just to kind of, you know, like, oh, I yeah, think yeah. I'm good. I got the therapy. And I immediately started to feel like in two or three days, mm -hmm. I can feel like the weight on mm. me again. Mm. Wow. And then I'm just like, all right, do I have to go back on the medication? Mm -hmm. And now I'm thinking, and um, this is where she like, it was like a gut punch. And I'm not even sure why mm -hmm. I got emotional when she said this, but I said, all right, so just finish this bottle. Mm -hmm. And she looked at me and she's like, I don't want to lie to you, but you're going to have to be on medication for a very long time, yeah. if not the rest of your life. Yeah. And that just, I mean, it really gutted me. Yeah. Um, because I don't want to do that. I don't want to yeah. have to rely on that, but I also yeah. don't know what else to do. Yeah. And that's one of the frustrating things when you have depression, like people, it's like, there was this one time, <laughs> do, you, do you remember the, the commercials for like proactive? The, the acne, proactive, the acne cream stuff, okay, like back yeah. in the day, they yeah. were just like everywhere yeah. and Diddy was doing all these celebrities. Uh, yes, okay. <laughs> and I was working in corporate America, right? And there's this, always this, this really helpful EA. Mm -hmm. And one of our <laughs> colleagues, she's a young girl, very young, mm -hmm. she had really bad acne. I mean, mm -hmm. like an acne beard. Okay. Right? Uh, the bad stuff. Yeah, yeah it was mm -hmm. really bad. And it was mm -hmm. like unsightly too. And I'm just like, oh man, I feel really bad mm -hmm. for her. 
And so one day it came up uh -huh. at the water cooler. Uh -huh. And so the, the woman said, you know, I'm going to go and talk to her and tell her about like proactive. <laughs> and she left and to go do that. And I ran after her. I was like, hey, don't do that. Yeah. And she's like, why? Yeah. I said, do you think that she hasn't thought about <laughs> proactive? Yeah. She's tried yeah, everything. There's probably something else going on there. Yeah. <laughs> this is like proactive can't yeah. do this. Like, and so I say that because that's the same way that I feel when people start throwing out things for like mm. with me. Mm -hmm. It's like, you think I haven't tried that? Yeah. I'm like, just be happy or right. just do this. And so that's why I don't talk about things. Yeah often just because first off i'm going through it and secondly i don't really want to hear like a whole wave of different like advice and i also don't want to get these texts like how you doing just making sure just just checking on you yeah how's your depression yeah like literally text like yeah. that. I'm like oh it's fine it's like overwhelming on multiple levels yeah whether it's unsolicited advice or <laughs> people just <laughs> yeah how's it going how's it going yeah so i wonder sometimes like did I mess myself up from a mm. chemical imbalance standpoint? Am I now like totally reliable? Because of the medication you've started recently? Yeah. Yeah. Because oh. like when I go off, mm -hmm. I just, you know, I can tell within three or four days, all of a sudden, like mm -hmm. things will just feel like they'll just pile up on me. Yeah. Like I feel like. Yeah. And then I realize like, oh, I haven't taken my medication. Mm -hmm. And so... It doesn't, I, I wish my medication had much more of like, um, like a numbing effect in a sense that like made it kind of chill, but mm -hmm. it does help me to get out of my head a lot more. Yeah. But to their point, the stressors in my life have also increased. Yeah. Yeah. So that's something else. Yeah. So maybe we need to be working on a lot more stress management stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, you don't, as I don't know if it would be good to be numb <laughs> to what's going on, you know? Yeah. Like what I was saying before, I just, yeah, that, that seems more scary and more, um, more peaks and valleys instead mm -hmm. of just kind of a, yeah, a wave maybe. Yeah. I mean, like I know, and it sounds crazy for me to actually say that, but yeah. that's, that's, that's relief. Yeah. For me not having to think yeah like that is you can shut it all off yeah yeah like uh yeah i have trouble sleeping i don't and this is and this is um this season is a little bit more difficult um so seasonal affective disorder yeah i have mine like during the summertime and so since yeah. it's been super hot i don't know i just feel like it's just been kicking my butt like a whole lot right i know i didn't even i didn't even know that that was a possibility i feel i feel like we did a video a long yeah. time ago on what sad was and yeah, you know, how the different seasons it can set in, and I'm just like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Texas yeah. summers. Mm. I know, and I, I just, man, yeah. and it stinks because I can always feel it kind of coming on, yeah. like the anxiety just like increases, yeah. and I just become worried about everything. Yeah, always, and yeah. then the ideation. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, so, you know, when I say numb, yeah. I honestly mean that in the sense that, like, man, I would just like to not think. Mm -hmm. I mean, for all intents purposes, that's why weed really, I enjoy weed. Yeah. Just because. Because it can actually. Yeah, it zone. literally mellows me out. Yeah. And, and it's just the right amount, too, depending on the different strain, of course, because mm -hmm. I've learned all about that kind of stuff now. And, yeah. Um, just like a small, like, little just puff, mm -hmm. like in the middle of the day or something, mm -hmm. whenever I'm, you know, like feeling it. I, <laughs> The other night, I had um, I had someone over. And we were, um, you know, outside, and um, we were talking. And she said, "Why are you like? Why are you shaking?" Mm -hmm. And I was pouring something, and my hand was shaking. And yeah. I said, "Oh, that's just, yeah, just the anxiety." Mm -hmm. She's like, "For real?" And I said, "Yeah, mm -hmm. it's all day." I said, "I wake up like this." Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the first yeah. thing I do is take a take my anti like um, you know like anxiety pills. Yeah. So that way I can stop. Like I yeah. can just be chill exist yeah <laughs> and yeah. look at things because i feel like you know it's i'm not as rational yeah yeah that's heavy man i'm sorry that's that's the case mm. do you feel mm. more um like i'm curious with having a journey with marijuana and then mm. also like anti-anxiety medications like do you feel like one or the other does better for you or is it just a, a mixture depend on the day kind of thing or yeah you know similar to what they're talking about like in this article i don't know what to feel yeah 
and my doctor is so frustrating because she'll ask me each month when we meet, like, you know, how are you feeling? Are you doing good? And I said, I'm feeling like this, but I'm not sure what I'm supposed to feel. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to feel like a big shock in my body yeah, and yeah, all of a sudden yeah. it's... Yeah. So I don't know, but I do know that, you know, I'm under a lot of stress mm -hmm. and I feel it more. Yeah. Um, that's why I work out and try to do other things right. and try to take some time. That's why, you know, so people commented too, oh, you don't really post or whatnot or where are you and first off i do post yeah. um but <laughs> <laughs> that's just the algorithm but secondly um more importantly too is during the summer it's really hard for me yeah it's really really hard mm -hmm. very hard and um yeah i'm just proud of myself just for <laughs> just for getting up and yeah doing i mean of so <laughs> i smile through it because <laughs> i've just learned how to do that um throughout the years, but I don't know. Mm -hmm. I honestly don't know, Jesse, if it's yeah. if I'm getting better or not. This has caused me have a lot of, you know, not doubts, but this past year too is one mm -hmm. of the biggest times that my faith was tested. Yeah. yeah. I feel like and I was just been so angry with God. Yeah. Like for mm -hmm. the past two years, mm -hmm. like really angry. Mm -hmm. Um having it's been really hard to pray. Yeah. Because I'm just like, this is, I only ask you to do like one thing. Yeah. Like, yeah. Just one. Mm -hmm. Like, and I, I don't know, sounds crazy, but sometimes I'm like, I don't know what it feels like to be normal. Yeah. I just like to be, just feel like normal at times. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's, it's interesting hearing you kind of unpack this because it's also like, you know, the job you've chosen mm -hmm. that you've done. It like you're a public facing person, you know, and so you've got to be chipper and happy. And it's just like, yeah, that's and, a lot, man. <laughs> yeah, it is. And, you know, first time admitting this, I guess, yeah. <laughs> publicly. But yeah, it is. And it's worn on me over the years. And because yeah. um, I, I know from, from knowing you through the years that like you you get a joy from doing that stuff because you're helping people. Yeah. You know, but the actual act of having to like get yourself up and be that smiling face on yeah. the camera, I can see yeah. being extremely difficult, you know. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and yeah, that's what I'll say. And I'll just put this on there too. Just like that's why I always say just to be kind to people. Yeah. Just mm -hmm. be kind, and you just never know what it took. Like, um, and this is not to bash, but I want to give this example because I think it's really important that sometimes the not the biggest criticism but the hurt can come from your own family yeah sometimes because it's just and they don't know what mm -hmm. to do they don't know what to say sometimes and so they're a little bit like they can be insensitive mm -hmm. like it would just um it would really hurt my feelings whenever i'd go and um and visit my parents and then maybe my car is dirty on the outside mm -hmm. or you know and or they come over and maybe it's not as tidy in one of the rooms and I I mean you should I mean you know I'll keep a yeah. tidy place but yeah. <laughs> just sometimes it's just it's really hard yeah you know and so to comment on that it's just like, it's like you really you don't know what it took just for me to get up this yeah. morning and really? I'm still smiling here and once you leave I'm probably gonna break down because that really hurt my feelings mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah like yeah so you know but to this article's point mm -hmm. I think that what they're trying to do is trying to change a lot of the way that, that they are evaluating mental wellness. Yeah. Um, so that way, because right now what they're doing is, is they've been tracking how many people are actually taking drugs. Yeah. And they're not really focusing on how many people are actually getting better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that is to understand that this, is, that this part of medical science yeah. is this fledgling feel right. like in mm -hmm. 2023 yeah that's really scary yeah yeah as i unfortunately it's like that's why conspiracy theories yeah. around the pharmaceutical industry exist right because yeah. it's like they're just making money they don't care about the results it's like well they do but yeah they're this is a clear example of areas where it's just kind of lacking yeah the actual kind of data that we need to see about like yeah are people actually getting better from taking this medication yeah. or is it adding to the 
adding to the noise yeah. in a sense of everything else that's going on. Yeah. So that's. Do you remember when we were in Benin and we were having conversations about a lot of these social issues? People wanted mm -hmm. to, they kept asking us about certain things, yeah. you know? And one of them said, like, this stuff doesn't exist here. It just doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. Like, I can't talk to my parents about that. What am I going to say? They're going to be like, what? Wh what is this? Yeah. And, you know? Yeah. And I feel that way when they talk about, like, mental wellness. They're yeah. like, what's going on? Mm -hmm. why, why do you think Americans have such a high rate of mental health challenges? Yeah. You're asking me? Yeah. I just, I, it's a lot of noise. There's a lot of things that we're supposed to try to, I guess, keep up with. Mm -hmm. And the older that I've gotten, and especially like having a family has really pushed me to have to think about this stuff where I'm just like, I think there's a lot to be said for like a quote, simple life, mm -hmm. like social media really brings you into the forefront of mm -hmm. everybody's stuff. And it's easy to see more issues all the time. It's True. easy to see more bad things. That tends to be what gets shared the most anyways is the bad stuff. And so, I don't know, when I look at it holistically, it's like, yeah, we, we've also had a sharp decline in like church going. Yeah. Um, and some people have started to kind of correlate yeah. the decline of going to church with the state of our mental health. And so I think there's something to be said about some sort of aspect of like faith. Yeah. And I always remember uh, something you said earlier, how you kind of were, you were existing in a normal that the doctors were telling you, you don't, you shouldn't be feeling this way, you <laughs> yeah. know? Yeah. And I remember a sermon that my pastor talked about and it was uh, on the topic of withdrawing and returning. Mm. So meaning like we withdraw to our life and then we return to church mm -hmm. and you kind of have this mixture of like, um, your quote like sacred life like when you're actively pursuing God and then your secular life when you're just out and about mm -hmm. doing normal everyday things um, and how that's like a pattern that Jesus modeled he always was doing things with people but he would always withdraw he would always go pray he would mm -hmm. always go you know fast for 40 you do yeah. all these things and it was meant to be a model for us yeah. that it's good to pull away from what's going on and um, and meditate, like think about stuff, like remember that the world is bigger than just us if we can, yeah. you know, like that uh, we're here to serve other people. And like those, those are the things that like yeah. I can get behind when I think about faith and stuff like that, you know. And yeah. So, yeah, I just, I think things are very, very complicated in life. And there's so many options, especially being in America. And there's so much... Yeah. Yes, there's opportunity, but then there's also a lot of struggle, and it's like mm -hmm. we're supposed to be this greatest country on earth, and then we see how yeah. things are going, and it's kind of like, well, is, is this it, how we want to turn out? Like, <laughs> is this the cost of freedom? Yeah. Is it? Uh, it seems to be right now. <laughs> I feel you on the part about like we have too many, we have so many options. Mm -hmm that I think that does something too. Yeah. Like, um, so we don't value like not having something to do or mm -hmm. not having, you know, or not going without. Yeah. Um, so I think that's created a need for us yeah. to always have to have something, always mm -hmm. need to want something. I remember this, this, um, I never know what you want to call him. He wasn't a historian, but he was um, a philosopher, mm -hmm. Henry de Tocqueville, and he said um, that Americans are inherently just rate um, or <laughs> not racist, but <laughs> Americans are are inherently restless. <laughs> yeah, yeah, restless just because we have an insatiable like need to always do stuff. Have, yeah. do something, have something. Yeah, and so I could I can definitely see that. I also think that social media, and I don't like putting there all the blame on social media because it's a great tool yeah. but i think the part about social media is interesting is that it's when you're able to see other people yeah and you're instantly comparing yourself to them mm -hmm. and i think that does something to you too i think you start to think like man maybe i should be this way or maybe i should have that mm -hmm. by now because they have that over there and so oh, it's the it's the comparison too that will drive you Comparison literally kills. yeah <laughs> I was talking to a buddy the other day, and he's just like super stressed out, like, and he was telling me, I was like, well, what's going on? 
everything he named was like, this is pressure that you're putting on yourself. This isn't even mm -hmm. like outside pressure, man. Like mm -hmm. you're doing this because you want to impress these people. Yeah. But that has nothing to do with the situation. Listen, <laughs> like mm -hmm. if you take out that need to yeah. try to stunt yeah. in front of people, yeah. I'm not saying the life would be easier, but I'm saying you wouldn't have this. You wouldn't yeah. be feeling like yeah. everything is going wrong. You only feel like everything is going wrong because you're comparing your now to somebody else's like now, which is huge and grandiose. And you don't know what they had to go through to get that. Yeah. Um, Bishop talked about that recently. He said that we we are we get upset and we get depressed mm -hmm. because we keep comparing ourselves to outliers yeah in the society and i was like well you know what that's true yeah i can see myself doing that yeah at times yeah i think for i think for me i tend to i tend to struggle with like not not diving into what i'm feeling in life in general by doing things mm -hmm. and so I, I would imagine that a lot of People in America are like that too, where they just keep, yeah. they keep busy because they don't want to deal with their stuff, you know? And so I, it's like, I may not struggle with uh, the, I guess, outward, like anxiety, like everything looks like I'm being productive and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But on the inside, that's yeah. that little, little twinge is still there. of just kind of like, ah, oh, well, I need to keep doing this because... Yeah. It's what validates me, you know? It's yes. what makes me feel I'm not I'm not okay just existing. Yeah. And that's what when I mentioned that withdrawal return, I never got around to the fact that like that's what I had felt too during that time where I was like, Oh, I've been existing in a state mm. for a long time and not realizing it and I've been okay with it. And now that I've actively said just like super practically like, um, I'm gonna stop working at four mm -hmm. and I'm gonna take from four to six to read or like no no devices stuff yeah. like that um even stuff as simple as like driving on purpose in the slow lane mm. like on my way home from stuff yeah. and not worrying about trying to like weave through traffic or like yeah. get somewhere fast like ultimately it's not like really little simple things like that i was realizing that i was like not okay mm -hmm. doing that. like i was not okay not working or like doing the dishes or doing a house project or the yard like i, right. I needed to always be doing something oh, you yeah. know and so yeah. actually just sit there and be okay all of a sudden i was real uncomfortable <laughs> no yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> to sit in your stuff just yeah sit in and your just thoughts. sit there and have yeah. to think about stuff you know and so i i try i'm terrible at it but i try to like wake up and not have my phone like mm -hmm. i try to just ease into the day with my own thoughts from the night before you know yeah. like but i'm pretty terrible at it honestly <laughs> you know i i get that i use my phone a lot though i'm gonna i'm not gonna yeah. lie but it's not because you know you're thinking that like oh because i'm on social media i actually spend very little time on mm -hmm. those platforms now just because yeah of what we're talking about right now it just mm -hmm. um it's just not a good for my mental wellness but i play games and yeah. i also just binge watch certain shows mm -hmm. and that's therapeutic for me yeah it really is so yeah. like i'm reaching for my device at the end of the day yeah to play dominoes, to play spades yeah. on there and just <laughs> zone out. Yeah. I remember a conversation <laughs> Abby and I had kind of earlier in the marriage years where um, it was kind of that conversation at the end of the day, binging TV, kind mm -hmm. of like every night, you know, and Abby kind of brought up like, is, is this the best use of our time kind of thing? Mm -hmm. One of those conversations, you know, um, like, should we just be reading? Should we do, be doing other things? You know, <laughs> I was just like, I, I understand the sentiment where you're coming from, but like, it really is that that disconnect time mm -hmm. and time to actually check out from what was going on the whole day. Right. And I feel like that's a lot more valuable than if I tried to sit down and read a book right now, I would just be thinking about all the yeah all the things. Like that's not the time for me to read a book. Right. Like there's a different time for that, you know. But at the end of the day, I want to zone out. Yeah, you know, and so now that's like it's like a protected activity for Abby and I because yeah, we both. It's, it's just one of those things where it's like, well, we're not gonna like feel bad about it because there's a little bit of that like, whatever Christian religion aspect to it, you know. Like, what does that mean? Like, just just like being too hard, or like we're not allowed to enjoy watching oh, TV, yeah. you know, Absolutely. or something like yeah. that. And so that's kind of what I was confronting everything with was just kind of like it's okay to en enjoy this. It's not yeah. bad. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean, it's something that we all do. I know I've been there too when I'm just 
maybe even eating lunch. Mm -hmm. Like now I'll make myself step away from the computer mm -hmm. and come down here mm -hmm. and, and eat. Yeah. Or I'll watch TV, watch, yeah. you know, watch the news and, and have a meal. Mm -hmm. So it makes me, you know, get up from what I was doing. Yeah. To try to do that but yeah it's just i mean you break it up a little bit yeah yeah you know and and to your point yeah like we try to is this the best you know you know use of my time like even yeah. that is an anxious thought oh yeah 100 percent. and yeah. you know who's, who you know and people who say this all the time well not all the time but i have a I have a large population of people in that like yoga stuff mm -hmm. they're always like aired comments other people like oh is um you know, people are just just always like wasting their time away doing X, Y, Z and thinking like, well, sometimes this stuff is therapeutic. Yeah. Sometimes that's their therapy. Like yeah. for me, binge watching Malcolm in the Middle, <laughs> binge watching yeah. Martin, now <laughs> binge watching <laughs> Ugly Betty has yeah. got me like busting at the seams, yeah. Yeah. you know, oh, like yeah. just laughing like, no, this is my therapy. And I had to forget and I had to allow myself to do that. Yeah. And it's like, why in the world am I just watching this like all mm -hmm. the time? But I realized through counseling too, just like, oh, this is my. It's been good for me. Yeah, this is me <laughs> shutting medicine. down. Yeah, this is me shutting down. Yeah, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. You're allowed to go and do that. Yeah. So, um, so moving forward, I I I feel like I'm gonna take a closer look mm -hmm. at my overall care. I yeah. think that I'm in really great hands. I'm very happy with my psychiatrist. Very happy with, with my therapist. I need to go back to her. Mm -hmm. Um. But I think to anyone listening to this episode, first off, to the person who's struggling, mm -hmm. like just know that you are not alone. Yes. Know that, you know, especially with the medication piece, like we're all just doing the best that we can. I'm doing the best that I can. Yeah. Um, and, you know, just you got to be here in order to get to the other side. Yeah. So that's good. Um, <laughs> so there's that. And to the people who maybe live with somebody or, or, you know, maybe they're dating somebody mm -hmm. that has it, just be mindful mm -hmm. of that. And I, I first off, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. in, a, in a sense. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry for you. Yeah. I'm sorry that you have to deal with this mm -hmm. sense. Yeah, you may love the person, you may love mm -hmm. us, but I'm sorry because it's not, it's not fair to you mm -hmm. that all of a sudden, like, man, everything was going well and now... Yeah they're moody or now they're this i mean and just know that that person really can't control that yeah it's the same thing and 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 i'm sorry that you have to have to go through that mm -hmm. i mean that's part of oh yeah as um yeah even with um yeah that's i just feel bad yeah. a lot oftentimes with that um but also it's a reminder too for people to um watch what they say yeah I remember, you know, and I'll share this, and maybe the person's going to hear this podcast and understand how it made me feel, but I was mm -hmm. dating someone, like, uh, lightly, but mm -hmm. it was enough that their words meant something. Yeah. And so I'd finally gotten the courage to open up and be like, yeah, so um, I take a little bit of, you know, you know like meds each, mm -hmm. um, daily, and just to kind of help out with, you know, with mood and certain things just because I get anxious a lot mm -hmm. and that's why I'm talking and then she interrupts she's like and this is what I'm talking about with people in the wellness community like you need to be eating right and exercising and what are you doing that you have to take um, a pill every single day just to feel good mm -hmm. and the person meant well mm -hmm. but when I tell you that that was one of like the roughest things I've ever heard mm -hmm. like it was that hurt my feelings, yeah. like literally hurt my feelings. Yeah. Like, wow, I'm doing the best that I can. Yeah. And you just crapped on that. Yeah. Like, so just know that people are doing the best they can. You're doing the best that you can too, in responding to somebody and helping somebody, living with someone. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. I think it's always also good to err on the side of encouragement, <laughs> regardless <laughs> if you don't agree with what the person's doing, you know? It's true. That's just, yeah. I feel like that's a, that's another to tie church stuff into it it's kind of like if you've ever been around a community that you know does prophecy type stuff oh yeah uh, good leadership i feel like tells you just it's it's not gonna be a rebuke most likely yes. it's gonna be a, a <laughs> word of encouragement you know right. and like so i think that's a good just yeah err on the side of 
compassion and yeah. empathy, you know, because you don't know. Yeah. Like. You don't. Especially being a guy, too. It's yeah. like for someone, a significant other, to be like, oh, why are you taking a pill? Like, just man up. And it's like, well. No. And that is manning up, yeah. too. Admitting that you need a little need extra help. help. Yeah. That that is mm-hmm. that is the form of manning up. And mm-hmm. not everything can be eradicated by you having a protein shake and a green juice and no. running every day. No. Mm-hmm. Like, people are still sad people are still depressed people are still because some of it is just it's hormonal it's it's chemical yeah so this is why what they're saying is that we need to do a better job in how we treat making sure that it's it's holistic which is why they brought up the whole thing about the problem solving therapy like that one has been has been more effective Mm -hmm. so that coupled with that medication can actually help people saying so we need to do more of that and we need to do more of tracking how people are actually feeling yeah and with that i'd say the doctors you got to define what feeling is yeah. because I don't know yeah. what to expect sometimes. Yeah. And I don't know, sure, I'm feeling great. Well, that's just because that big product that I had last mm-hmm. month is finished. Yeah. It's not because <laughs> of the pills. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So, so we got to <laughs> figure out like, how do you, yeah. how do you know what's, <laughs> what, what is the stressor and what's not? Yeah. What is it actually causing? Is this the mental thing or is this like, yeah. you know, just the stressors of life? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so just be compassionate, yeah. as, as, as Jesse said, and I, and I think that, that'll go like a long way. And if you are not, if you're in a serious relationship with somebody and they struggle with like mental wellness issues, 1,000%, you need to be in therapy just as much as they are. Yeah. You need to be, you need someone to talk to, you yeah. need someone, you need to understand it more mm-hmm. because it does take a little bit more like elbow grease sometimes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. do that. Oh, yeah. That's good, man. That's really good. <laughs> so, Wise words. Check out the article. Um, it's in Time Magazine. It is called... Oh, where is it? Okay. Check out the article. It's in Time Magazine, and it is called America Has Reached Peak Therapy. Why is our mental health getting worse? Mm. And it's just... Um, it's a really good overview of what happened. And if you want to dive deeper into... The, um, into how Prozac started to pop up. Yeah. <laughs> you, can, you can Google Ray Osheroff. <laughs> Ray, and that's Osheroff, O-S-H-E-R-O-F-F, about this case 40 years ago and how it just impacted psychiatry. Someone needs to make a documentary. Yeah, that, they should, because mm-hmm. yeah. now we're here. And circling, it comes full circle again with this defensive medicine. Yeah. Like... Mm-hmm. Just because, again, it's just like a price of freedom because yeah. we've got so many, like, everyone wants rights. Yeah. But if you got the right to go ahead and sue for everything, right. like, the guy sued yeah. them for not giving him medication yeah. that, first off, wasn't proven to work. Yeah. It's not even proven. Yeah. It's just anecdotally. And now, and <laughs> fast forward, people are like, I still feel bad. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. You know, you got to suck as a doctor. Like, <laughs> people don't know what they want. I'm just, you know what? Here, take this medication. What Got else do you have? Yeah. <laughs> what else do you have? <laughs> that case is a little bit more, um, uh, I guess, validity to it than um, what was from last week, week before. I can't oh, remember yeah. which one. The, the, <laughs> the for not getting ale. the Popeye's chicken sandwich or yes. whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was upset. <laughs> Driving around for the elusive. I was like, man, yeah. you don't get your... <laughs> <laughs> oh. It's the same thing, though, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Cool. Thank you for <laughs> indulging. Um, of course, that. man. Yeah. That was All good. Right. <laughs> um, All right. So I don't have a rant today Did you, or something on my heart. This was on my heart today to share. Uh, I mean, there was an article. I, I subscribed to a news platform for the first time, actually. The Atlantic. Right. All right. Good. Yeah, I've been loving it. Yes. It's a really like, good publication. It's been really great just to dive into different stories and read different stuff. But there was one... Um, on the topic of uh, the decline of people going to church. Mm. And so the author of it wrote, is, you know, it's his opinion piece, but he said he grew up in like a small Midwestern town. Everybody yeah. went to church. Your week was filled with church activities. And now that he's older and has since moved away, everybody that he was close with during that time mm-hmm. has uh, completely stopped going to church. Mm. And so he's kind of was diving into it. And it was an interesting article because it was diving more so into is the current way that churches meet one day a week on a weekend 
is it conducive to the American lifestyle? No. Mm -hmm. It's only, you know, we're only working more. We're not working less. Like, mm. things are getting more expensive. Like, life is a lot. Yeah. Um, maybe you're a parent and getting to church on a Sunday morning is tough as is. Maybe it's your only day to chill and relax. And then maybe two, three, 10, 20 Sundays go by and you haven't been to church. Mm -hmm. And then you're kind of also regretting going back because you don't want people asking you questions yeah. about where you been, I see you, you know, like. Mm -hmm. And so just talking about like, is that system broken? Mm -hmm. Like, is that, is that how this life should be lived, you know? Mm -hmm. And it goes for just kind of just about any religious group that meets, you know, on a weekly basis. Is it just Christianity that's been declining or is it all faith? I'm not sure. I know this article was written mostly about Christianity. Christianity. Um, I wonder, because Bishop talks about this too, mm -hmm. and he said people always say that the church is declining, but it's actually not. It's growing. Yeah. And, and I can see that perspective mm -hmm. a lot more just because I was going to ask, how does he explain the decline in people going to university? Because oh, okay. that's, uh, yeah. that's also declined too. Yeah. Um, just because of alternative options. Yeah. And I feel like that's what happens with church. Yeah. And also alternative totally. options to actually attend church too. Yeah. Like, why do I have to go to church? I mean, I just saw Bishop on my mm -hmm. feed four times today. Mm -hmm. He said some really great things that really, you know, like ministered to me. And I did yeah. my Bible study at home because of that. Yeah. And so I'm good. I don't yeah. have to. I don't feel the need that I have to go ahead and go. Mm -hmm. Because my relationship is my relationship with God. And so yeah. I don't really have to. I don't have to be in a house of worship, people yeah. are saying. Yeah. The, the end of his article basically kind of sums up talking about all this stuff. And he, he's kind of saying, like, what's probably most beneficial to a society when it comes to a religious setting is the community that you have and the face-to-face mm. -face with people mm -hmm. and making it smaller because so much... So much is revolved around, well, keeping the lights on at your church building too, yeah. right? Like making sure the people that work there are paid and make sure that outreaches can be kept up with and all that kind of stuff. And so he was just kind of going on to say like, yeah, like maybe, maybe it is good to kind of look at things in a smaller yeah. smaller sense and he visited, at the end of the article cracked me up because he visited, visited some, I can't even remember the name of whatever this sect of Christianity was but it's literally like compound style people that have literally bought houses together. Mm -hmm. They, all their working money goes to the same place and they share in expenses. And he's like, he's like, yeah, it's a weird place to go to. Um, yeah. But when you, uh, when you come across a place that I guess isn't actually like, uh, I guess culty, and they're actually kind of sharing, you know, <laughs> they're, they're kind of doing a good job of yeah. like, well, you know, maybe most American churches kind of focus on the building and stuff. It's like this True. group of Christianity was kind of focusing on the community aspect yeah. more. And yeah, so him, him talking about that was funny, but it just, it did get me thinking. I'm like, yeah, that's, that's ultimately the benefit of being a part of a church yeah. and attending a church it. is to be with other people mm. and the therapy stuff that we've been talking about, that can be a form of therapy, like having the right people to talk to, close people to talk to that you can confide in. But again, you know, has the church always been a good job of not judging people who struggle with certain things? Not at all. No, so not. I think that's the, uh, what I was left with after reading the opinion piece just made me think of kind of how we, how we approach church today. Is it the best way to be doing it? Yeah. Like, I totally agree. If we're all for hearing a good teaching and receiving something to get some Bible time in, like, you could totally do that just watching on TV. I don't think churches need to be bummed yeah. out by that, you know? Like, what do yeah. you expect? It's, it's a busy life we live, you know? Um, sometimes it's, you get just as much satisfaction from going to brunch with friends on a Sunday morning than you do going to church and hearing a word or whatever, you know? So... <laughs> So, yeah. And so maybe you answered part of your own question too, like because mm -hmm. I feel that you can get inspired from a lot of places, and I yeah. think people are understanding that more. Yeah. Um, which is another conversation: is the church becoming much more like spiritual mm -hmm. and less like biblical? I feel like mm -hmm. is it becoming? Like, I've heard people 
it's a, kind of like a motivational place and not necessarily sure. thinking about you know the bible yeah, yeah, as yeah. much but um yeah. i don't know i think i think that also they're bringing the bible to life and mm-hmm. like you know they don't have the internet back then yeah but we're talking about comparison all right yeah. let's talk about the way that god sees you right you know so yeah. those things but um yeah i don't have to look at that article yeah, but it's been on my mind yeah that's yeah. good man that's really good and I'll just plug this too, you know, if if you're if you um have a few of the extra bucks, mm-hmm. go and subscribe mm-hmm. and pay for some news. First off, it's one of the only places now where where you can get some credible sources right. and have people that actually spend money um and time mm-hmm. investigating it. That's why you pay because these are investigative journalists who yeah. put a lot of put a lot of, you know, in the, on like on the line yeah. um just so that we can have these stories mm-hmm. and um and it does help out. So yeah. um, if you if you have an iPhone, I believe if you do Apple Plus News, then some of the, these subscriptions, kind of like The Atlantic, are actually included in it. Yeah. And I also know that if you use Feedly, um, which is mm. an old type Feedly, of thing, okay. yeah, Feedly, yeah. Um, with the RSS feeds, which I didn't even know that it still it's was a happening. throwback, yeah. yeah. That was a throwback. But it's still there, That's and um, some of these articles are free. So nice. I read the Atlantic articles through Feedly nice. because they're free that way, just yeah. FYI. But I also pay for... It's a good life hack. Yeah, it's a good life hack, right? <laughs> um, but I also pay for the Wall Street Journal, New York Times, nice. and, um, and there's one more I forget. Um, but So yes, I am paying, y'all. I'm so, yeah. paying my stuff. He pays for Newsmax for some reason, too. I don't know why. <laughs> Get your weekly donation going in. <laughs> Woo, I, need, I need that type of hustle. $400 million? Absolutely. Yep, absolutely. I, will, I would. Yeah. COVID does not exist. And let me tell you what, what else, else should I say. I say? <laughs> let, me th- let me throw this at the wall. <laughs> oh, I would Woo. definitely do that. Yeah. Oh, goodness. <laughs> okay, man. So how are you? Uh, been good. Um, I feel like maybe a little bit more overwhelmed than normal, uh, just kind of stuck in my head with is mostly just pertains to like work stuff. Mm-hmm. And so say turning off work has been harder over the last maybe two weeks than it was prior. But mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Overall, it's just kind of like it's every time that happens, I remind myself and my wife reminds me like one thing at a time. <laughs> yeah. One thing at a time. What can you do now? Don't look at the laundry list of things to do. Yeah. Just tackle one task. Be okay with it. At the end of the day, you know, that email can wait to be sent. Or you can tell that client, hey, one more day. Or yeah. you can do what you need to do, you know. so That's good. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Yeah. You so have to I'm, remind I'm saying yourself. that because I need to remind myself right now that mm-hmm. one more, one more yeah. day, you know. That thing is that yeah. urgent. You, yeah. can, you got it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm feeling, you know, pretty much the same. This has been, um, again, a really stressful time mm-hmm. for me. But uh, this past week has been, has been good. Had some up and downs, but um, yeah. overall, it was really good. It ended on a really high note <laughs> with some good news about a project, and so yeah. that really boosted my mood. That's um, awesome. Um, but I thought in you all, were say the shake. Oh yeah, the banana pudding oh, shake. Yeah, yeah. Well, banana pudding I'll tell you about what happened afterwards. Uh-oh. It wasn't so pleasant. Let me just say that. <laughs> Uh, I know. Oh man, it was. I wish. I wish. Let me just say this. <laughs> I finally went to the bathroom yesterday. Oh, so Ooh. that should tell you. And I could not eat anything just because it was like out here. I could oh. barely breathe. Is this amount of pressure on my stomach? Oh, so I was thinking you had a Dumb and Dumber moment. Oh, and it's like, like oh. just uh. <laughs> well, when I went to this clinic, they gave me some stuff, and I'm yeah. like, hey, I want this out. I want you know mm-hmm. whatever you need to do, and mm-hmm. so they gave me some stuff. And yesterday, I was so excited. It was do- it was during a meeting mm-hmm. when I was zooming. I'm like, oh, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, yeah, hurry up. Yeah, yeah, and I yeah. ran out of the way. I was like, ah, yes, freedom, <laughs> <laughs> finally. <laughs> so yeah, that came with some consequences. <laughs> Oof. But overall, I'm doing well, man. I can't yeah. complain. So yeah. that's awesome. All right. Cool. Well, cheers, cheers with my empty espresso. <laughs> the water's too far away. Cheers, y'all. <laughs> Thank you for listening to At The Table. Remember, you can catch up and watch full episodes on YouTube on the Fit Men Cook channel. And if you enjoy the podcast, please consider giving us a five-star review on whatever platform you're listening on. In the meantime, be kind to yourself, to each other, and break bread. See you next week.